Have you ever wondered why is it that your heart beats really fast when you are nervous? And how do you know when you are hungry? Well, the answer to both these questions is one and the same. It's a hypothalamus. Now, hypothalamus, it works like a CEO. It gives tasks to the pituitary gland and the pituitary gland is the manager who executes it. So in this lesson, we'll see how the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland works together. Now, let's talk about a gland. Now, gland is like a machine and machine makes products. Glands makes hormones, digestive juices, sweat, saliva, tears, and milk. All the glands in our body are divided into exocrine and endocrine glands. Exocrine, remember the word ex because it exports and endocrine, remember the word in. Now, how does exocrine export? It does it via a duct and endocrine, it passes its hormones directly into the bloodstream, in. Now let's look closely into the endocrine gland. Endocrine gland has lots of cells. Cells have nucleus, blood vessels and capillaries. And these cells, they also have something called a secretory vesicle. It's like a packet. Okay, so these secretory vesicles at the correct time, they move to the cell membrane, open up its packet and releases the hormone which travels through the blood to distant organs. Now, imagine the hormone to be a key and the hormone receptor to be a lock. Every hormone has a hormone a receptor which is specific to them. Now, you cannot open the car with a house key, can you? Similarly, if you watch closely, this triangle piece hormone doesn't fit here. And look how perfectly the circle hormone fitted. So every hormone is very specific and when it binds to its receptor, a biochemical change takes place. Let's look closely at the brain. At the bottom of the brain, there is a part below the thalamus called the hypothalamus. Now hypothalamus extends like a stalk called the infundibulum into two lobes the posterior pituitary and the anterior pituitary. Posterior pituitary has lots of nerves, so it's called the pars nervosa or the neurohypophysis. And the anterior pituitary has lots of glands, so it's called adenohypophysis. Adeno is a prefix for a gland. And in the middle, there's pars intermedia, which secretes MSH or melanocytic stimulating hormone. Now, how does the CEO or the hypothalamus communicate with posterior pituitary? Well, it does so via a neuron. So signals pass from the axon to the nerve endings and hormones are released from the nerve endings directly into the blood. Posterior pituitary gland it produces ADH or antidiuretic hormone. Now Antidiuretic hormone reserves and saves a water. So if ADH is impaired or not working, it leads to a condition called as diabetes insipidus, which means that extra urine is produced and there is water loss from our body. Now it's quite inconvenient if extra urine is produced. We'll have to make so many trips to the bathroom. Second is oxytocin, which is responsible for the contraction of the uterine muscles during labor. It also lets down or oozes milk. Oozes starts with the letter O. Oxytocin starts with the letter O. So oozing of milk after the baby is born through the mammary gland. Next is it is also the hormone of bonding. Bonding between the mother and the child or father and the child. Now, how does the hypothalamus communicate with the anterior pituitary? It is via a portal system or the blood vessel. Now, hypothalamus makes a set of hormones. It sends it to the anterior pituitary. And anterior pituitary makes a different set of hormones. When they, really, when they get this hormone from the hypothalamus, it takes, up, takes it as a signal, you know. And it sets its own set of hormones, which passes to different organs. 
anterior pituitary produces TSH or thyroid stimulating hormone ACTH, growth hormone and prolactin and gonadotropins. Now first let's talk about thyrotropin releasing hormone. It is sent from the hypothalamus to the anterior pituitary. Anterior pituitary releases TSH or thyroid stimulating hormone just like the word thyroid stimulating. It stimulates the thyroid gland to produce T3, T4 and calcitonin. Now the hypothalamus sends out corticotropin releasing hormone to the anterior pituitary and anterior pituitary sends out ACTH. ACTH stands for adrenocorticotropic hormone. Adreno stands for the adrenal gland. Now adrenal gland sits on top of the kidney. It's like a cap. Now this particular hormone ACTH acts only on the cortex because the adrenal gland has cortex and a medulla. Cortex is like the shell and medulla is the middle part. Why am I saying it specifically is because cortex sets out a different set of hormone and medulla makes a different set of hormone. Next, the hypothalamus secretes growth hormone releasing hormone to the anterior pituitary which releases growth hormone. Now, growth hormone, if it's sent out in excess, the person becomes a giant, gigantism. And if it's less in quantity, the person becomes a dwarf. Now, if the growth hormone is produced in excess after attainment of adulthood, it leads to a condition called acromegaly. Now, acromegaly is usually because of a tumor in the pituitary gland. Now, when the hypothalamus re realizes that enough growth hormone is released, it stops it by releasing ho growth hormone releasing inhibiting hormone or somatostatin. Next, the hypothalamus releases prolactin releases releasing hormone to the anterior pituitary which releases prolactin. Now, prolactin produces milk. Pro, pro, produces milk. And it is also responsible for the growth of the mammary gland. Now, when the hypothalamus realizes enough prolactin is released, prolactin releasing inhibiting hormone is released to stop that. Next, the hypothalamus releases gonadotropin releasing hormone to the anterior pituitary, which releases gonadotropins, that is the LH and the FSH, and this reaches the gonads. Now, when the hypothalamus re realizes that enough of these releasing hormones are released, it secretes gonadotropin releasing inhibiting hormone to stop that. Now, what are the gonads, the testis and the ovaries? Now, LH or the luteinizing hormone, it re re uh, releases testosterone, in the testis and FSH or the follicle stimulating hormone releases ABP or antigen binding protein in the te testis. So together these two are responsible for sperm production and ovaries is LH is responsible for ovulation that is making of the egg producing the egg and progesterone production and FSH is responsible for follicle maturation. So, production is by the LH and maturation of the egg or the follicle maturation is by FSH. Now, follicle maturation leads to production of estrogen. Now, this estrogen and progesterone together prepares the uterus for pregnancy. In the next video, we'll see a part 2 of the same chapter which covers pineal thyroid, parathyroid, thymus, adrenal gland and pancreas. Thank you. So I really hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and press the bell icon to keep yourselves notified every time I upload a new video. Thank you.